insulation, the thermal envelope of a passive home versus a non-passive home. Now in general, there's about three times the amount of insulation that will go into the thick ass walls of a passive home or the thick ass roof of a passive roof system. Air tightness is very important as well. But with respect to thermal envelope, three times the insulation. Now in houses that are further away from the equator, that are heated most of the year rather than cooled, a substantial more insulation is put into those walls, put into the roof system, the building envelope, than houses that are located more closer to the equator. But in general, the thermal insulation in a passive home can range from anywhere from R45 to R85 in the walls, or R60 to R120 in the roof system. A lot of insulation really required. You know, when you think about a garage, a garage is built with a six inch wall assembly. It doesn't really matter where that garage is built in the world. If it's a wood frame system, it has a six inch wall. And most building codes in North America, for example, the houses are also able to be built with six inch walls. In a passive house, the walls are just as thick as they need to be. The garage that's attached to a passive home has six inch walls and that passive garage, call it, or garage that's attached to a passive home, the walls that are the same thickness as most non-passive homes. I know what you're thinking, that is crazy. So build thick enough. Don't build your house like a garage. The vapor tightness in a passive home versus a non-passive house. Ultimately, non-passive buildings, almost impossible to create a continuous vapor barrier. Why is this? Because that vapor barrier is penetrated in so many locations, it's impossible to make the home vapor tight. So where electrical boxes are installed in walls, electric wiry, wires all over the place, staples connecting that vapor barrier to the wall frame, the inside finish, however it's applied, is also screwed or nailed to the wall frame. Ultimately, the non-passive house, there is no vapor protection. Compared to a passive house, the vapor barriers are put within the wall assembly, not in front of the wall assembly in northern climates, so that that vapor barrier is protected, not able to be penetrated, regardless of the situation. I've said penetrated way too many times now. Okay, next point, air tightness in a passive home versus a non-passive house. Now take the non-passive home. So most building codes in North America say that the house should achieve a 3.0 air changes per hour standard. So that means all of the volume of air in the home naturally leaking through the building envelope three times every hour. The problem is testing is not required. So homes could be anywhere from three air changes per hour up to 10 air changes per hour. Most important thing here, it's not required to be tested. Test your house, but build airtight first so that you're building airtight. Passive houses, on the other hand, only allow for a 0.6 air change per hour. So still a little bit of air leakage, but very little. Little enough that the house is really able to operate like a thermos. Open permeability or the vapor openness of a passive home versus a non-passive home. The problem with non-passive houses, you know, the building code requires vapor open assemblies. It's the reason why house wraps need to be placed out, outside of wood-based sheathing is to provide that open permeability. So house wraps are supposed to be open permeable in outward direction. But here's the kicker. That wood-based sheathing product that's placed on the outside of a wood frame non-passive assembly is actually a vapor barrier. Anything one perm or less is considered a code approved vapor barrier. So the building code is telling you to put on a vapor barrier sheathing and then an open permeable membrane outside of that. It doesn't work. There's no vapor openness in non-passive buildings. And that's why most non-passive buildings have mold damage, big problem. One of the greatest things a passive house does to protect your investment is guaranteed open permeability. You cannot have a certified passive home unless you have a hygrothermically protected building. So hygrothermics are part of passive house certification requirements for the system to be open permeable. So if there's any moisture, that moisture has to be able to escape. So where this open permeable membrane is placed, whether it's on the outside of the home or on the inside of the home, will depend on the construction style it will depend on the climate zone where the house is located, but open permeability, your only protection is with a certifiable passive house system. And when you build open permeable, now you're building a house that's going to last an infinite amount of time. 